I'm Lisa Stone, and you are listening to Season 8 of Parenting Aces. Welcome to Season 8 of the Parenting Aces podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and this week we are talking ITA Summer Circuit with Corey Brooks, who runs the Summer Circuit for the ITA. Corey is chock full of information about how the summer circuit works, how you sign up, and some changes for 2019 that are pretty exciting. I published an article on ParentingAces.com a couple weeks ago about the summer circuit, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes as well. Uh, So between that and this episode, you should be good to go for getting your junior or college player signed up to participate in these awesome, awesome events hosted by the Intercollegiate Tennis Association. I want to just remind all of you, too, that we have launched our memberships at ParentingAces.com. We have four different options for you. There's the free option, which gives you access to a lot of content and all of our podcasts. And then we also have a monthly and an annual option. Uh, the monthly option is $9.95 a month. The annual option, you get a, a pretty decent savings. It's $95.50 for the year. But we also have a special membership for certified coaches. And so I want all of you to check those out. If you haven't joined us yet on ParentingAces.com, I hope you will consider doing so and become part of our community. We recently hosted our first webinar for our premium members, and it was a really big success. I'm, I'm very pleased with how that went. We have future webinars in the works for our premium members. And so hopefully that'll be enough to convince you to join us. If not, we also have all kinds of discounts and special offers for our premium members. And so I urge you to take a look at all that information on parentingaces.com and please consider becoming either a monthly, annual, or certified coach member of the site. All right. So let's get into our conversation with Corey Brooks. I luckily just had the opportunity to see him down in Orlando at the NCAAs. I was down there just for um, a day or two, actually, depending on when this airs, I might still be down there. (laughs) So um, I'm not sure how the timing is going to work on that. But uh Having Corey talk about the ITA Summer Circuit is always great, and I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode with Corey Brooks. Corey Brooks, thanks so much for joining us on the Parenting Aces podcast. Thank you for having me. So why don't yeah? So why don't you give our listeners a little bit of info on what your role is with the Intercollegiate Tennis Association, the ITA? Well, absolutely. As you said, my name is Corey Brooks. Um, I've been with the ITA coming up on five years now. I think at the beginning of, of June, I'll hit my, my five-year anniversary. And my title will actually be changing ever so slightly um, on that date as well with, with Erica Perkins Jasper um, moving on from the ITA to be the athletic director at, uh, at TMS. Um, I will be the senior director uh, over championships, rankings, rules, and officials. Wow. Yeah. That's a pretty so, broad scope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it really covers, uh, as I tell people, rather than trying to, r- rather than trying to memorize that title, it really is, is just, um, you know, uh, over everything sort of related to competitive tennis, I guess you could say, whether it's our tournaments, our rankings. Uh, or, or officiating. Uh, uh, that's kind of that's kind of my uh, area of expertise now. Got it. And so, just so our listeners understand, the NCAA championships that is not an ITA event, correct? Correct. That is the that is an NCAA event. We are um, we don't have any really anything to do with the administration of that event, although. The NCAA is a really uh, close partner of the ITA, and we do we do uh, work closely we, with them in, in all aspects of collegiate tennis. And in fact, I got off a call this morning with NCAA Division II uh, uh, ahead of their championships. So uh, we do we do provide support, but this is an NCAA event at the end of the day. Right across all divisions, correct? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So really why you're, why you are here this, this week, this particular time of the year is because the ITA summer circuit is right around the corner. And I recently published an article with the dates and kind of, you know, the, the nuances of the summer circuit, but there are some changes happening in 2019. And so I would love for you to share with everybody what's happening this year and, you know, why their kids should be signing up for the events. And let's start by having you just kind of give a little bit of background on the ITA summer circuit, why it was created and what it is out there to accomplish. Absolutely. Can you still hear me? I sure can. Oh, now I can't. Wait, nope, you disappeared. You got you got me? I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh sorry about that. Um so uh the 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 ITA summer circuit really came about um it was sort of the brainchild of Lynn Loring, who was the the women's coach at Indiana at the time and, and David Benjamin and the ITA staff at that time. And really the point of the summer circuit was to fill in some gaps, I think, for, for current college players who, who didn't have a lot of opportunities um, during the summer months. Uh, to uh, and so the summer circuit was created um, using mostly uh, ITA member institutions who wanted to host a tournament uh, during that time to give those opportunities to players. And so I think, obviously I wasn't around back then, but I think probably in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 events was probably, uh, where, where the circuit started. And we're now in, in 2019 up to 56 tournaments, uh, uh, across the country during those six weeks. So really that's, that's kind of the, the origin of the circuit. Um, I, I do always try to give Lynn Loring a lot of credit because I think it was a great idea. Um, I think there uh, there are a lot of players who are looking for some opportunities and they're just not out there if you're not playing professional or you don't have the ability to gain entry into some of the professional events. Um, you really are kind of left out there with not much to do. I mean, maybe some, um, you know, occasional semi-professional tournaments, money, prize money tournaments that are offered, but otherwise uh, nothing really uh, structured out there for, for those types of players. So, that's kind of the origin uh, of the summer circuit. And you cut off, Corey, what year did you say that it started? It was, uh, I, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. It was oh. in the 90s. I know. It was in the 90s. 90s. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, no, that's fine. That's I just, I, I missed that part. Of you. <laughs> you went silent for a moment. Um, okay. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. And so it has evolved and now the ITA summer circuit is not solely for current college players, but also open to who? Well, for NCA compliance purposes, the, the event has to be an open event. So there cannot be any restrictions in terms of who can um, register for a summer circuit event. So really there are no, there are no guidelines The juniors, collegians, uh, adults, all are, able to participate in the summer circuit if they wish, or at least register for a summer circuit event if they wish. So, um, yeah, so it's really open to anybody. Now there's, there's restrictions beyond that in terms of draw size and that kind of thing. Obviously tournaments can't take everybody that signs up, but the ability to register for a tournament, um, you just need to be an ITA member, um, and then register for a tournament. Uh, there, there are no age or ability, uh, level restrictions. And to become an ITA member, you do have a summer membership, correct? Correct. We have an ITA summer playing membership that you purchase on the ITA website, um, itatennis.com, and it is $30, and it basically provides you the opportunity to participate in any and however many tournaments you would like to participate over the course of that summer. Gotcha. Okay. And so then once somebody signs up for one of the ITA summer circuit events, what is the format that they're going to play? So our tournaments are all, uh, they're, they're singles and doubles. The singles is no add two sets, two out of three sets with the third set being, a uh, a match tie break to 10 in lieu of a, of a full third set. Doubles format is also no add scoring. It's an eight game pro set with the tie break at seven games all. 
Okay. And do they play lets? The men play the no let role. The women play, um, the women uh, still abide by the same division one rules. We basically play the division one rules for these events. So the men have a no let role and the women's, uh, the women's side does, does have lets. Got it. And so you said that the tournaments are, are the registration for the tournaments. Let me just clarify, uh, is open to anyone who wants to play. So that could be a junior player, a collegiate player, an adult player, um, and the collegiate players could come from any of the divisions and could be of any level. Correct. Uh, uh, we have uh, college players from all five divisions, NCAA Division One, Two, II, and Three, as well as um, you know, junior college and NAI. They all participate in the event, both genders, and we have junior players, and we have a surprising number of uh, post college players, adults uh, that have, um, you know, played played college tennis at one point that also still kind of want to keep playing in the summertime and participate as well. So, well, well, there's no restrictions. I, I I get a lot of questions over the course of the summer, and I think our staff gets a lot of questions over over the course of the summer, just in terms of we know we can sign up, but would you recommend it? Is it a good thing for, um, you know, for my child? This is kind of where they're at. This is their age. This is their ability level. And I've always said, I think, um, you know, to spend your money wisely and uh, uh, to get to get the most bang for your buck, if you will. Um, you know, we, we always kind of, I, I would say age 15 and up is probably um, a good, uh, a good kind of cutoff, if you will. Um, and, and we always kind of describe it as, you know, some, summer circuit is, is there for, you know, current college players, incoming freshmen and, and high level juniors, I think is, you know, it's somewhat of a vague term, but I think I do get a lot of questions over the course of the summer from parents who are kind of like, Oh, I don't know if I want to, you know, my child is this age and at this level, what do you think? And um, so that's kind of the best way I describe it. At, at the end of the day, uh, a parent could, could call the tournament director for that event and get some advice as well. A parent could go on the, uh, the tournament page for that and kind of see who signed up uh, and get some indication there as well. Right. And so there's six weeks of tournaments. They culminate in a national championship or summer champ. What do y'all call it? The, na- the, the Oracle ITA National Summer Championships. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I would so, be remiss not to mention that this is uh, that the summer circuit um, is is the title sponsor of our summer circuit is Oracle. Yeah, and and for those who don't know, I mean, Oracle has been an incredible supporter of college tennis, and one of the reasons for that, I, I think, is Mark Hurd and his history at playing at Baylor, and he had Mark is senior, senior, senior at Oracle and has been very involved in growing college tennis and supporting college tennis. And, um, you know, the tennis stadium at Baylor, I'm pretty sure has Mark's name on it. So (laughs) that gives you an indication, but, um, so Oracle has been fantastic. So let's talk about the, the summer championship. Okay. Well, uh, we, we do have our, as I mentioned before, we have our 56 tournaments this year. Now, uh, I'll, I'll dive back into the circuit real quick. We've got one of our rules is that our um, our circuit can only be hosted by ITA member institutions. So you'll see if you're looking at the calendar of events, the calendar of tournaments on our website, that they all take place on a college campus or at a facility that a college or university uses as their home facility. So it's kind of neat, I think, in that respect, um, for uh, especially for for those high level juniors and those incoming freshmen to kind of get to go and play on on various college campuses. Uh, maybe that's not something that they're doing on a regular basis throughout the the other part of the year. But um, those are the hosts of our school of our of our tournaments. We play. Um, Anywhere from, I'd say, seven to ten tournaments per week, they are uh, selected and placed um, within that given week based on their geographic location. So we don't have too many uh, tournaments too close to each other from a geographical sense. Um, And then, um, yeah, we play for six weeks. uh, And it's culminated in the second week of um, August. Um, 
at TCU and Fort Worth at the National Summer Championships. And so that is a 64 draw for men's and women's singles and a 32 draw for doubles. Uh, and there's a qualifying day uh, the Friday before the tournament starts. So anything beyond, I think we take it, we'll take up to a 64 draw of qualifying. Um, and this is all these selections, whether you're placed in Maine or whether you're placed in qualifying is based on UTR. Um, and so uh, we have a 64 draw. We play that off. You can get in. You don't necessarily have to play a summer circuit event in order to gain entry into that event. Although uh, I would mention that we do have during those first six weeks, what we call our summer circuit points race. So based on your finish, you have the ability to um, acquire points. Uh, and then at the end of the six weeks, the top five men and women in our points race standings gain automatic entry into the main draw at TCU. And they also gain uh, the ability to get up to $600 in reimbursement travel funds from the ITA and Oracle. Oh, awesome. That's a huge yeah. bonus. So is, I know when my son was doing the summer circuit, there was a thing where you had to play kind of all of the tournaments within your region to earn the points mm -hmm. to qualify for the end of the summer event. Is that still the case or can you go to various regions around the country? You can play wh wherever you want. Um, the, the points are the same at every tournament. Um, and, and like I said before, you don't necessarily have to play at this point in any of those tournaments within the six weeks to get entry into the, into the national summer championships. Although I think, you know, if there's any question as to whether or not you, you might may or may not make the main draw, it would probably benefit players to play in those tournaments and, and try to earn points through the points race. And so the championships, what is the carrot for, for playing that event? Um, I'd say two carrots. Um, one would be uh, we will be in our second year of off offering prize money at that event. And that, that event is a $20,000 uh, prize money purse, so $10,000 per, per gender. Um, I think the singles winners, the men's and women's singles winners, earn a $3,000 uh, first prize place prize um i think maybe half of that for our final is fifteen hundred dollars and we have prize money for doubles as well so i would say that was carrot number one um and then i think for the division one players current division one players that play in that event the other carrot would be those players are able to uh get a wild card into the main draw of the men's and women's ita all-american events that happen uh in october wow that's a huge carrot yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And so one of the things that is new this summer is there's prize money not just at the year end at event. There's prize money all summer? Correct, correct. So What's going again, on? How are y'all doing that? <laughs> Talk about the NCAA rules and prize money and all that. Right. So so first I would say, again, I'd go back to Oracle. I think this is um, a major part of, of Oracle's investment and, and all things ITA, but certainly uh, the ITA summer circuit. Um, they are the reason why we're able to do the prize money um, at the national summer championships and now implement um, prize money within the first six weeks of the, of the summer. Um, uh, and I think, um, not to speak on behalf of the NCAA, but – uh, NC, the NCAA bylaws do allow current college players and um, and high school players ability to earn money up to a certain amount over the course of 12 calendar months, um, and then um, not over and above their expenses. So uh, I don't want to. I don't have the bylaws in front of me, so I don't want to misquote the bylaws. But um, certainly, uh, certainly an option um, for players at any level, current college players or uh, uh, high school players. Um, but w uh, as always, I mean, we would encourage anybody to, and we have documentation, um, that we, that, that will be provided to every player who qualifies for prize money throughout the summer containing the NCAA bylaws. So they can make sure they're doing it, uh, in, in accordance with those bylaws and not breaking any rules or, um, you know, 
getting themselves in, in, in any kind of trouble uh, with respect to their amateur status. Right. And there is, I think, you know, one of the procedures is that if you do earn prize money, the tournament provides you documentation, which you just said, and then the player submits that documentation to their compliance officer at their school to make sure that, you know, there's a paper trail and everything's on the up and up and Correct. that way everybody stays out of trouble. Correct. And and so what are we talking about prize money wise? So I think this is our 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 first uh, venture into prize money uh, with respect to the regular um the, the the regular summer circuit events within the first 6 weeks. Um so they're it's going to be fairly minimal. Uh, the, the purses are $2000. Uh so it's just $1000 per gender so we're talking $300 for the singles winner. Um not not major amounts but I think we feel like it's a you know a great first step. I think it gives players the opportunity to go and play and uh, p- perhaps win some prize money and, and cover the expenses that it costs for them to travel and stay in a hotel and, um, you know, their entry fees and, and, and other expenses related to playing those tournaments. So I think it's a good start. We're, we're like the other things with the summer circuit where, you know, we've been um, experimental, I think, on a lot of different aspects of the summer circuit. And this will be one of those areas where we'll, where we'll give this a shot here in the summer of 2019. And, when we're done, take a look back and see how it went and see if it's something that we want to move forward to and perhaps expand uh, uh, more tournaments uh, in 2020. How did y'all come up with the amount of money? Was it just simply based on what Oracle was willing to put out there? Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, it's, it's right now it's, um, it's sort of a matching grant program. So basically... <laughs> Uh, the tournament puts up half the money, uh, and, and Oracle and the ITA put up the other half. So, um, at this point, uh, you know, we had 11 events that were very interested and, in, and, in, and in willing to take that on this summer. And, um, I think we could have done more if we, if we would have had more tournaments that wanted to do that. So we've got room to expand for sure, but that's kind of, that's kind of the genesis of, of that. So it, it won't be all 56 summer circuit tournaments that no no money. this summer it's only 11 so if you Got go it. on our website and you look at the um the calendar of tournaments you'll see there's a little notation next to the tournaments that will be offering prize money gotcha and just for my listeners i there will be a link to that in the show notes on parentingaces.com so make sure you check that out if you're player is interested in having a shot at earning some prize money that's that's amazing Let's talk, Corey, excuse me one second. (coughs) It's pollen season here in Atlanta. Um, (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Um, Let's talk a little bit about UTR and your relationship, your being ITA's relationship with UTR and how y'all are integrating UTR into the summer circuit. Absolutely. So UTR has been a partner of the ITA's now for for many years. Um, uh, And we have kind of slowly but surely, uh, I guess, increase that partnership or our partner participate, participation with UTR uh, over the course of the last four or five years since I've been at the ITA. I, I remember, um, you know, five years ago when, when I got hired, uh, I, I started in June. So my first exposure was the ITA summer circuit. That was my first ITA program I was involved in. And even something is... Um, it's simple, I shouldn't say simple, but the, one of the first challenges was I noticed these tournament directors trying to seed these tournaments where they have junior players and college players and adults. How do you see they have this very convoluted and confusing procedure where they were trying to use college tennis rankings and trying to use junior tennis rankings in, in some strange way to figure out who was going to be seeded. And so that's where UTR immediately jumps in and helps us out. Um, is that's that that common denominator uh, among all levels and all ages of tennis, where we can um, you know figure out how to how to see the draw appropriately using UTR. Um, and then I think over the years um, we've worked more closely with UTR. Uh, gosh, maybe two years ago we um, moved over to UTR um, and started working with them within their tournament management platform. Uh, which was different than the one that you see uh, on their site now. And then we we um, worked with them again on their tournament management platform last year, 
Um, so I, I guess one of the biggest challenges a few years ago was, I think you, it's safe to say the two, you know, we've incorporated, incorporated prize money into the summer circuit now, but the two main reasons that players at the end of the day play in the summer circuit is one, to get competitive match play, and then two, to work on that UTR rating. Um, and so because of that, I think it made sense for us to work more, more closely with UTR in a number of areas. One is using their tournament management platform um, as the host for our tournaments. That way, when these matches are played and these scores are entered, they're going directly into the UTR system. I think anybody that's listening now that, that has – uh, played in the summer circuit or had a um, a child that's played in the summer circuit knew the frustration um, over the years of um, scores being taken from whatever platform they were they were being recorded in and getting into the UTR system in a timely fashion. That's always been a, a major obstacle. So now that we're working directly with UTR and using their platform, that eliminates that obstacle. I think and and is a nice uh, a nice perk, but. We've also had the challenge um, over the years. One thing I noticed when we started was we had several tournaments that were really large. I mean, we're, we're talking 128 draws, sometimes even bigger than that. Um, and basically, uh, with juniors and college players and adults playing in there, the range of ability levels really started to grow. And we saw these huge draws where the seeded players were um, – really kind of cruising through the first three rounds, uh, sometimes four rounds, really lopsided matches. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you begin to question whether um, what you're doing is worth everybody's time. So I think over the last two or three years, we've experimented with UTR and trying to figure out how we can move to more of a level-based system um, using UTR um, so that everybody is kind of um, – feeling like every minute they spend on the court is a, is a minute well spent in terms of the competitive level of the match so that we don't have a lot of 6-0, 6-0 matches that are taking 30 minutes where both players probably don't feel like they've they've gained anything at the end of the day. So um, as it stands now, we uh, what, what will happen when you register for a tournament is you will be divided up into flights um, with no flight larger than 32 players, and this will be based – um, solely on UTR. So those flight sizes can vary. They might be, in some cases, they might be a 16 draw. I think that's our minimum size. Um, but our TDs are instructed to never be more than 32. So you will be divided up into flights um, based on based on your UTR at that time and um, obviously guaranteed two matches. But I think that's how we've, uh, to answer your question in a long-winded way, that's kind of been our... our uh, our our relationship with UTR over the last few years. So, I mean, one of the things that's happened in the past, and I know you're familiar with this, is, you know, these kids that are maybe lower UTR kind of jump at the opportunity to get into these events and have a shot at playing somebody with a higher UTR in hopes of beating them and having their own UTR go up. And then, you know, you look at the player list and it's a bunch of lower rated players and then the higher rated players end up not playing the tournaments and Mm -hmm. it's, it's been kind of a mess that way. Um, So, I mean, is this something that's going to be addressed with all of, you know, using the UTR platform this year and all that? Well, I think there's a lot of, um, I know exactly what you're saying, but I think there's a lot of, a lot of different layers to that um, to, in terms of addressing that issue. And so I think, and it's probably a slow process, but I think um, this move to flights by UTR, um, what we need is we need, um, uh, we, we need all our college players to kind of understand that that is now the system. Um, and, and so that there's some protection in that sense um, for those higher rated UTR players um, to know that, you know, there still may be a, a one or, or, or two point range who, who knows um, with in any given draw, but there are, there are uh, instruments in place that, that kind of help in that sense. I think we're always on the lookout for ways to improve that. Um, it will always be a challenge. I don't think it's ever going to be a challenge that, that goes away. Um, 
but I think it's something that we're always looking at trying to figure out, you know, uh, a better way forward um, so that we're getting everybody uh, that wants to play to play and having them feel like their time is well spent. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, one of the things that's recently happened, too, is UTR kind of did a revamp with their rankings and people saw their rankings or their ratings, excuse me, um, take kind of a, a major drop. Um it's it's really bizarro. Um, I'm not sure what happened if the algorithm changed or what happened, and so I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out this summer with the summer circuit, and you know now that after that kind of adjustment with UTR, this is kind of the first opportunity for juniors and collegians to play against each other again, and right. it'll be interesting to see you know, what happens at the end of the six weeks. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think I, I certainly won't, won't uh, speak on behalf of UTR because I'm not, uh, I'm not necessarily an expert on their algorithm, but um, I know the folks over there really well and uh, they work really hard on trying to be as accurate as possible. So I have a lot of, um, a lot of faith in that group. Um, um, but I, I, you know, I think I'd also mention the other aspect to this is this, um, transition tour or, or former yep. transition tour and the and the issues that have been created there and so I'm hoping that um while I hate that some of those players don't have the opportunities that they used to that uh perhaps the summer circuit for some of these folks um you know might be an answer uh at least a couple of weeks during the summer and hopefully the inclusion of of prize money is also something there to to make that a little bit more attractive yeah, you read my mind. That was my next question to you was the ITF World Tennis Tour. And, you know, the fact that a lot of these college players who have previously spent their summers playing futures, you know, or getting into at least the qualities of futures, aren't going to be able to get into those events anymore. Right. Um, this this craziness with the ITF is, is really wreaking havoc for these kids. Uh, and so I... I, I'm hoping, I know you're hoping that the ITA summer circuit is the answer for them that, you know, instead of just spending all their entire summer being frustrated that they're not getting into these events, that they'll just go ahead and sign up for the ITA summer circuit and at least guarantee themselves some quality match play. Absolutely. And I, and I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're, 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 I know that they're, they're discussing changes and they're reevaluating their system as well. Um, we're all probably to some degree a little bit at their mercy in that sense. Um, but I, I think slowly but surely, I think we'll try to, um, without making major changes to the summer circuit, we will try to um, like I said, make it a little bit more attractive. But at the end of the day, we're you know we can't offer them, we can't offer them ATP and WTA points. But um, you know the opportunity opportunity to play um, uh, competitive matches against other high quality players and and maybe earn a little bit of prize money along the way. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll kind of continue in that direction and give them uh, you know some sort of opportunity to fill that gap. Yeah, fantastic. Well, what else do you need us to know about the ITA Summer Circuit, Corey Brooks? <laughs> well, um, I can tell you our registration for our tournament is opening on May 20th. So the first thing you want to do um, in order to play the Summer Circuit is go to the ITA website. When you go to itatennis.com and scroll down, you'll see a link to our Summer Circuit page. You can't miss it. Um, and from there, you can click on uh, a little blue button. That'll allow you to purchase your ITA Summer Circuit membership for $30. You'll get a confirmation email. Um, I think you get two confirmation emails, a receipt, and then another email that ha contains your ITA member number. It's a ITA dash and a very long number. You will you will need that Um in order to register for an actual tournament. That will be one of the, the boxes you'll have to enter when you register. Okay, um, so let me just let me just say really quickly, those of you listening, I want to make sure you heard him. You are going to need your member number to register for the tournament. So when you get that email from the ITA, make sure you keep it in a safe place so that you can access that number. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Absolutely. And it's a really long number one that you can't memorize either. So you'll definitely want to hold on to that. 
Um, those those were available for sale uh, on May 1st, so you can do that now. On May 20th, which is a week from Monday, I believe, um, registration for the 56 tournaments um, goes live. So, again, if you'll you'll go to the ITA website Summer Circuit page on May 20th, there'll be a, a link there that will basically take you will transfer you, and this is another thing I want to emphasize because it is a little bit of a complicated process, but it will transfer you over to the UTR site where all all 56 tournaments will have their own individual tournament page. You'll click on the tournament that you want to sign up for and go through the process on the UTR platform. So uh, without um, creating too much confusion because we used to give people a username and a password on the ITA website and then there was all sorts of confusion. We're not doing that anymore. So you just know that when you're on the UTR site, you want to be logged into your account so that when you're registering. So they'll need to, they'll need to set up an account on UTR first before they can register for an actual ITA summer circuit tournament. Right. Okay, so I'm hoping all of you listening already have done that as much as we've talked about UTR on Parenting Aces. Um, But in case you haven't, make sure you go capture your child's profile on the UTR website. And I will have a link to that in the show notes as well before you try to sign up for an ITA Summer Circuit tournament. Exactly. And I think, you know, that was a big issue last year that a lot of people had to work with UTR on and, and that was sort of uh, people who were creating an account, but it wasn't synced up with their, with the results that already existed within the UTR system. So really, really um, important part of that process is doing that. So okay. yeah, you will go to UTR and click on the tournament that you want to play in and go through the registration process over there. I feel like the registration process, you know, once you're, once you're logged in, you've got your profile set up is, is a pretty simple process. Um, you pay $65 for all tournaments. Um, that includes singles and doubles. You don't have to play doubles if you don't want to, but it, it covers singles and doubles. There's an option when you're registering for the tournament where you can, if you know who you want to play doubles with, you can enter your doubles partner at that time. I think there will also be an option where you can indicate, hey, I do want to play doubles. I don't currently have a partner. Um, in which case, what will happen most likely is the tournament director will match you up with someone using basically all the singles. Um, but I think those, you know, the doubles process will probably be um, a little bit different. So you'll definitely want to work through the tournament director of each individual event with respect to that process. And um, we forgot to talk about the fact that some of the events have back draws. Are all of the events have back draws? How is that working? All this of summer? the events should have the singles back draw. Um, they're all required to have a singles back draw uh, played to completion. Um, doubles does not have a back draw. I think we, a tournament director could have a back draw, but they are not required to have a back draw for doubles. Okay. And these tournaments are each three days, typically Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Right. Or- right. So we, another, another change that we've made um, over the last few years, I think when I started, we were a little bit all over the place and some of the draws were so big that they were finishing on Tuesday. Some were starting on Friday. Some were starting on Saturday. I know there were a couple, couple of tournaments that took place during the week. So one of the biggest areas of feedback that we've gotten over the years from college kids and parents for that matter is, uh, I have an internship. Um, I have a summer job. Uh, my parents don't want to take off a day of work to take me to this tournament. So you'll notice when you look at the calendar of events for this year, that I think all but one of our events are Saturday start dates. So they're Saturday, Sunday, and Monday because of our limiting the size of the draws to 32. They can guarantee to be finished in, in three days with really only the finals and maybe the semis and the finals played on Monday. So by and large, everybody will be done, um, you know, no later than Sunday. Great. Okay, so $65 for each tournament. That includes singles and doubles. It includes a singles back draw. So there's an opportunity for a lot of match play over that three days for that $65, which is awesome. There's also the opportunity to earn prize money at some of the events. And I suspect that the 11 tournaments that are offering prize money are going to fill up pretty quickly. So um, We hope so. 
Yeah, you yeah. might want to go ahead and register for those first if they work in your schedule and right, graphic and good, area and all that. Sorry to interrupt. That that's a that's a great point. It it is so these tournaments are on a first come first serve basis, right? So, um, you know, if the tournament says based on their court numbers they can handle 64 men and 64 women, it's the first 64 people in each gender to, to, to sign up. That part is not based on UTR. Once we reach capacity or once the deadline passes, then those people who signed up first uh, and got in the tournament, then they're flighted based on, on UTR. So I don't want anyone to think that, um, you know, there are 15 UTR, it doesn't matter when they sign up. Uh, if they are, uh, you know, if the, if the tournament fills up, they're going to be waitlisted regardless of, of what their UTR is. That's that's a huge point. So it's mm -hmm. unlike USTA junior tournaments where you just have to make sure you've signed up by the deadline and then you have to wait and see if you get in. This is the first, however many they designate for their particular tournament, the first ones to sign up get in, and anybody who signs up after that is waitlisted or told, sorry, try next time. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Correct. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, that's an important distinction, parents of junior players. So make sure you hear that. This is not USTA where you can wait till 1159, the day of the deadline, and sign your kid up. You are risking that they will not get in um, if you do that. So if you think that your child is interested in playing in, in one or more of these events, Go ahead and get them signed up. Is, is there a penalty for pulling out? So there, there is, and 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 the reason we do that is we like to. Um, our our deadlines are typically, I think, um, gosh, Monday. I think they're Monday for a Saturday start, or Monday for a Friday start, Tuesday for a Saturday start. So we like to keep those tournaments open. Uh, the registrations open pretty pretty late in the process, not what really prevents us from doing any type of selection because I think, you know, mm -hmm. people want to make their plans. And um, if we, if we got into a selection process, we'd have to push those deadlines up. Um, I think a lot earlier and, and, and in order to give everybody enough notice of whether or not they got into a tournament and so you have people signing up for multiple tournaments. And so right. that's something that we really, we really tried to avoid, but our refund deadline is basically 10 days. If you, uh, if you withdraw within inside 10 days of the start of the tournament, you do not get a refund. If you, um, if you do, uh, if you withdraw outside of that 10 day window, you do get a refund minus any uh, processing fees. Got it. Okay. So that's important to note as well. So don't just randomly sign up for things that you're, you know, you're not going to be able to go to <laughs> make sure that it's going right. to work. <laughs> Otherwise you're going to be out your registration fee, your 65 bucks. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Corey, I, I think we've covered everything. Was that information overload? I think we, I think we did too. I, I mean a little bit, but I think it's important. <laughs> and I think between this episode of the podcast and the article I published, uh, a few days ago, hopefully everybody will have everything they need to get registered as a member, to sign up for tournaments, and to really take advantage of this awesome, awesome series of events that the ITA puts on every summer. Absolutely. And I think uh, anybody that does have questions, a, a lot of the information that, that I did mention today is is on our website on our summer circuit page at itatennis.com so i think um uh, um you can go back there and get a uh, a little refresher and thanks for for all your help in, in promoting uh the summer circuit and everything else with respect to college tennis that you do absolutely my pleasure and hopefully am i going to see you down in orlando next week i will be there wouldn't miss it hoping fantastic. for sunshine fantastic so that'll be fun Thanks so much, Corey. I really appreciate you taking time out. I know this is a crazy busy time of year for you guys, and um, we always love having you on the podcast. So thanks for doing it again. Best of luck with the summer circuit, and I look forward to following the progress this summer and seeing how everybody's doing. And to my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on Parenting Aces. 
I'm Lisa Stone, and you've been listening to the Parenting Aces podcast. For tennis parents, by a tennis parent. If you like what you've heard, I hope you'll share the podcast with your tennis community. For all the information you need to navigate the junior and college tennis journey, be sure to check out ParentingAces.com.